So here are the answers to the questions from the previous chapter. So why don't you pause the video, tick your answers off and then go on to the next chapter which is Inheritance Genetic variation Now when gametes fuse, the offspring gains genetic material from both parents and this gives rise to variation in the next generation. Some of the characteristics of the offspring are controlled by a single gene and there may be different versions of a particular gene. These different versions are called alleles or alleles or alleles. Nobody seems to know how to pronounce it. So for example, we all have a gene for eye colour but I may have the allele for blue eyes and you may have the allele for brown eyes. So alleles are different versions of the same gene. And if we know the alleles possessed by both parents then we can predict the outcome of a cross between them. And we can do it using a genetic diagram. Now in any exam questions about this always 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 draw a genetic diagram because quite often you can get nearly all your marks if not all your marks just by doing the genetic diagram correctly we'll see how to do one in a minute now the first person to start investigating the inheritance of different characteristics was an Austrian monk called Gregor Mendel he was famous for studying peas he was the first person to give the idea of separately inherited factors that give us our characteristics. In other words, he was talking about genes, but of course, in those days, they didn't know about genes, so he didn't really understand how it happened. But no one took any notice of him anyway during his lifetime. He was only a monk, so they didn't give his ideas any credit whatsoever. So you need to learn these definitions for all these particular terms. Now, alleles and genes, we've talked about already. Alleles can be recessive or dominant. Now, if it's a recessive allele, then that characteristic is only expressed if you inherit two copies of it. If it's a dominant allele, it's always expressed, even if you've only inherited one copy of it. Now the genotype of an individual is the alleles which an individual possesses. Think of it as the letters that you put into the genetic diagram. Whereas the phenotype is the characteristic which is expressed or the characteristic which develops. So for example, my alleles for eye colour, I've got blue eyes, so my phenotype is blue eyes. My genotype I would describe as little b, little b. Now if you're a homozygous individual, then you have two identical alleles. So I'm homozygous for blue eye colour. Whereas a heterozygous individual has one dominant allele and one recessive allele. But if they have a dominant allele, then they'll have the dominant phenotype. The dominant allele will be expressed. Now some disorders can be inherited. One such condition is polydactyly. Now this is the inheritance of an extra finger or thumb. Now this is a dominant condition, which means that you need inherit the dominant allele from only one parent to have the condition. Cystic fibrosis is an inherited disorder. It's a disorder of the cell membranes and it causes cell membranes to overproduce thick sticky mucus. Sufferers have lungs that tend to get clogged up with mucus. Now the cystic fibrosis allele is a recessive allele. So if both your parents possess one allele each they won't have any symptoms because they both have a healthy dominant allele which protects them from the disease, so they're called carriers. So for example, here's a question about polydactyly. A couple, one of whom has polydactyly, have a child without the disorder. So show by means of a genetic diagram how this child inherited two normal copies of the allele. 
Now, the parent with polydactyly must be heterozygous. To have a child without the disorder, then that parent must have had a recessive normal healthy allele to pass on. So that parent must be heterozygous. So that's the affected parent, big P, little p. Normal parent is little p, little p. And then 50% of the children will be normal and 50% will have polydactyly. So to get all your marks in this genetic diagram, you have to express the ratio 50% normal, 50% affected. And you have to identify the normal children and the affected children. This example is about cystic fibrosis. So we have a couple, neither of whom has cystic fibrosis. So they're both carriers. They produced a child with a disease. So show by means of a genetic diagram how the child inherited the disorder. So remember, cystic fibrosis is recessive. So both parents are carriers, so they're heterozygous. So you can easily fill in the genetic diagram showing all the ratios of the different offspring. Identify the affected child, that's the one with two recessive alleles, and give the correct ratio. There's a 25% chance of having an affected child. OK, that's the end of that chapter. Here's some test questions to check your understanding.